blessings and glory, honor, power, majesty be unto our God. I greet you in the name of Jesus. For the year 2013, um, we are all excited one more time because another year has come and we have an opportunity in a year to serve God and to manifest his glory and to declare the things that he has put in our spirits and in our lives to share with other people. Well, 2013 has arrived. And they tell you that the figure 13 is dangerous because um, in those Babylonian code of Hammurabi, um, the 13th law was omitted because they, it was associated with evil. So you go into some countries and um, 13 does not appear, 13th floor does not appear when they build a skyscraper because they are afraid of 13. And many people attribute Friday the 13th with evil. I will not advise anybody to ignore these kind of beliefs. Um, there is an account proverb that says that people take advantage of Christmas to eat fowls or chicken. So when days are associated with evil, principalities and powers, those that dabble in the occult and witchcraft, can take advantage of our general fear for these days and use it to perpetrate evil. Therefore, I will advise you that in this season and in this time, you should bind more than ever before. You should lose more than ever before. You should pray more than ever before. Don't take anything for granted. Now, in line with the, the kind of expectation we have for the year and the challenges we have to deal with, the theme that we have at Eastwood and our ministries for the year 2013 is speak the word. Speak the word. Anytime chaos appears in life, God is dedicated and committed to speaking the word. The Bible said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God said, let there be light, and there was light. Therefore, we conclude that when God needed light in the world, he said it, and there was light. You and I know that God is light. God is light. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And, and yet, when God, who is light, wanted light to shine on the face of the earth. He said, let there be light, and there was light. The Bible said we are the light of the world, just like God is light. But if we want light to shine in the world, we will have to say, let there be light, and there will be light. Jesus is the word. The Bible said, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And yet we are told in a story in Matthew chapter 8 that there was a Roman centurion whose servant was sick. And this man came to Jesus and besought Jesus that Jesus might heal his servant. And Jesus said, I will come to your house and I will heal your servant. And the man said, sir, I am a man under authority. I say to this one, go and he goes. To this one, come and he comes. To that one, do this and he do it. You are know you are a man of authority. You don't have to come to my house because I am not worthy that you should come under the roof of my house. And watch what the centurion told Jesus. He said, stand here and speak the word only and my servant will be healed. So the centurion is telling Jesus who is the word to speak the word and his servant will be healed. So, the word of God made flesh, that is Jesus, the Logos. Jesus, the Logos, spoke the word, and the man's servant was healed. So we have found out that God, who is light, spoke light before there was light. Jesus, who is the word, spoke the word 
before the word healed the servant. In your case, you are not the light. In your case, you are not God. So if God spoke the word and light spoke the word and the word made flesh spoke the word, you and I must speak the word before the word will manifest itself. Knowing the word is not enough. Memorizing the scriptures is not enough. It is speaking the word that gives the word the tangibility of expression. So when the devil came to tempt Jesus, Jesus did this, just remember scriptures in his head. He said, it is written. Then he spoke it. Man shall not live by bread alone. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. The Bible said with the heart, a man believes unto salvation. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, a man believes unto righteousness. With the heart, a man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And you and I want salvation. We want deliverance. We want healing. It will only come by the confession of our mouth. I believe that in 2013, we will have to speak the word because, number one, we will have to overcome man's hypnotizing power. We will have to overcome so many strange voices that will come against us. We will have to overcome trials and temptations. We have to overcome insurmountable challenges. We have to overcome the difficulties that have to do with growing into Christ-likeness. And uh, on the 31st of December, 2013, we had a wonderful service. We call it the Foundation Night. We do it every 31st of December. We had the Foundation Night, and boy, what a service we had. And in that service, I set this concept or this, this direction of speaking the word in context and the service was an awesome one for the 31st night and I believe that though I could have spoken to you from directly this way about speaking the word I want you to also capture the atmosphere in the church on the 31st night and I know the 31st of December 2012 is past but you can still join us in that atmosphere in the desert pastures in Bogatanga where I brought that prophetic word and gave instruction to the body of Christ. Join me in that service and your life will never be the same. Watch. We have never been at this place where human beings prefer committing suicide to staying alive. We've never been at this time when you can be sitting down here today but you are not sure of tomorrow. We have never been at this place where you can have your best friend and yet the person is more dangerous than you can ever imagine. You can be with your own relatives and you never understand who they are. We've never been here before. We've never been here. Dangerous times. Trials and temptations abound in our time. It is becoming increasingly difficult for the righteous to live peacefully in the world difficult. The wicked persecute the righteous and make it difficult for them to execute God's mandate on their lives. Laws are made to frustrate the righteous. By speaking the word of God, you and I can overrule the decrees of men and establish God's counsel. It is only by speaking the word. We must speak the word. Jesus was there when the devil came and tempted him. Command stone to become bread. Then he told him another time, bow down, worship me. I will give them to you. Another time he said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. And he will bear you up in his hands. In all of it, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. Speak the word. But until you know what is written, you cannot speak. Speak the word. 
Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Study the word. Meditate on the word. Speak the word. Release the word. And I see a 2013 coming. Where the overcomers will be them that speak the word. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of the mouth. You will open your mouth and speak the word. Come on, shall speak the word. If you don't speak the word, you will be overcome by temptations and trials. Things will happen to you and you will think God does not even exist. Things will happen to you and you will say, where is God? But if you know to speak the word, you will be like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. For I know. How does he know? It is written. How does he know? It is inspired. That my redeemer liveth. And he shall stand upon the earth in the last days. I see an overcomer. They overcame him by the blood of the lamp and by the word of their testimonies. May you overcome with the two-edged sword in your mouth. May you overcome by the inspiration of Almighty God in your spirit. May you overcome by the word. For in the beginning was the word, and that word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. That was made in him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Receive the word of God in your heart and your mouth. Come on, shout yes! So, the word of God will become crucial because of the hypnotizing charm and glory of man. Man will look so wow with the antichrist spirit that when you see them, you say, uh -uh. sometimes we only come shy of thinking some of our men of God and politicians are God. We may think they are God. But may God deliver us Amen. from the abomination that make it desolate. It said in the last days, you will see a sign that the end is coming when you see the abomination that make it desolate go into the temple. And the abomination that make it desolate is a man that stands in the church and they worship him as if he's God. Look at them, they can't even clap. Strange voices. Number two, strange voices. Number three, trials and afflictions. Trials and temptations. Number four, we will need the word of God because of the insurmountable challenges that we will face. Every aspect of human life is asking questions that demand the miraculous and the demonstration of God's power. Miracles are needed in the face of the problems that confront mankind. And these miracles are embedded in the word of God. No word of God is void of power. Where the word of God is, there is power. Healing, deliverance, victory, they come through the word. Listen, things are going to come against us. I call them insurmountable challenges. They are going to be difficult challenges. Things a human being cannot help you. You will go to this man's house. He will tell you, I can't, go to, I can't help you. You will go to that man's house. He will tell you, I cannot help you. You will go to this doctor. He says, I can't help you. You go to this lawyer. He says, I cannot help you. You go to this engineer. I cannot help you. When you hear that, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Say with the psalmist, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from God. You remember. Now the Egyptians are men and they are not God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. Oh, you will hear many of them. 
this disease cannot be cured. That one cannot be done. That one cannot be done. That one is impossible. That one is impossible. You look up into heaven and shout, but with God, all things are possible. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass. May the word of God sustain you in 2030. Insurmountable challenges. Problems man cannot solve. Difficulties a banker cannot help you. Confusion a lawyer cannot take you out of. Problems which your pastor can't help you because he has got bigger ones than yours. <laughs> May you find your Bible wherever it is. Beat the dust away from the Bible. Begin to meditate on the pages and it will be held to all your flesh. I see the word of God bring you healing. I see the word of God bring you deliverance. For he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Come on, clap your hands and shout it like your voice is yours. Insurmountable challenges. Next reason we will need the word of God. Attaining Christ likeness. We will need the word of God in our time because people, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how to say what I want to say without sounding sacrilegious. Without sounding offensive without sounding funny and weird praise the Lord for the great things he constantly does in our lives it was Paul who said now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. I wish to introduce to you my latest seven friends. I call my books my friends. Last year, 2012, the Lord gave me a mandate to write 20 books. I just felt in my spirit that in the year 2012, write 20 books. And I set out to do them. Um, by... October of 2012, I had written and published 13 of them, and it was left of seven. By the grace of God, in December of 2012, I received the last seven books, and I want to introduce them to you, and I believe seriously that they will bless your life. These books were written against the backdrop of the fact that I realized that many spiritual things are taking place in Ghana. And no matter how we criticize them, they are not going to go anywhere. People are falling under the power. People are screaming in tongues. You go into our churches and people are rolling on the floor. And we don't understand these things. You go into places and they are anointing people with oil. They are giving people prayer cloths. Now, one group of believers go to the extreme and they make it look like without the anointing oil and the prayer cloths and things, nobody can be healed and nobody can be delivered. Another group of people go to the other extreme and say that once the scriptures are completed and delivered to us, and once we have the Holy Spirit in us, we don't need any symbols and tokens for ministry or the impartation of grace. So I wrote this book, these books, and I believe that they are a good balance to our beliefs in the things that happen in the realm of the spirit. This book is called Symbols and Tokens. Symbols and Tokens Explained. How do we explain symbols? Like Elijah tells the king, King Joash, shoot an arrow. How do we explain things like Elijah's mantle? How do we explain things like handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and put on the sick and the sick were healed? Symbols and tokens explained. Next book, The Laying On of Hands. The Laying On of Hands. A doctrine 
which is almost becoming extinct in the body of Christ. Third one is the one people would normally consider con controversial, but I think that there is so much of it in the Bible that it shouldn't have been confusing anybody, falling under the power. I concluded in this book, Falling Under the Power, that I don't think we are falling enough. If the things that happened to the people in the Bible that made them fall, if those things were happening to us today, I believe we shall likewise fall under the power. But if we are not falling under the power, it's likely that the phenomenon they experience, the phenomena they experience that made them fall under the power, we are not experiencing the same thing. This one is called anointing with oil. Anointing with oil. That one is the power of breath. Why do preachers breathe upon people and into microphones? This one here is mantles, little things that carry God's power. And this one here is the fear factor. How fear has limited many people and actually disqualified them, discouraged them from flowing in the things of the spirit. So these are seven books that will make you seriously spiritual. They will impact on your life and you will be able to affect people by the ministration of the spirit. They are not common topics to write on. And God gave me the revelation to put them down so that you will read them and be equipped. Don't miss it. Look for them somewhere in a bookstore, in some of the Fountain Gate Chapel churches, and then, of course, at places where I speak. And you can also find them online. You can get my books online on Amazon.com. On Amazon.com, you can find all these books, and then you can purchase them online especially for those of you that need books, electronic copies of books. God mightily bless you. I love you. And keep patronizing and fellowshipping with us at the Love Revolution. I love you. Bye-bye for now. I'll say it this way. That we need the word of God because the quality of the human being is reducing. The quality of the human being is reducing. Everybody say the quality of the human being is reducing. Come on, shout it. The quality. Do you know televisions are improving? Computers are improving. Furniture is improving. Buildings are improving, but I tell you, human beings, our quality is reducing. I'll prove it to you. Human beings today are living shorter than human beings in the days of Methuselah. At first, the human beings were living 900 and something years, 800 and something years, 700 and something years. Then it came down to 500. Reduced to 120. Then the psalmist brought it to 75. These days, life expectancy, when you live up to 65, you have lived old. Most of our people are disappearing in their childhood and in their early 50s. Why? The quality of the human being is reducing. Number two, in terms of morality, Many years ago, even taboos in our villages prevented people from sin. Today, even in our churches, with the word of God preached to us, speaking in tongues, look at the life we live. People are doing things, mama, in our churches, which some time ago, idol worshippers were not doing. I know that among adult worshippers, they were not sleeping with their friends or their brother's wives. Among adult worshippers. It was a haram. People were not sleeping with their own daughters. Today, they do it and go for communion. I'm telling you, the quality of the human being is reducing. Listen, the quality of the human being is reducing. We have the makeup. We have the makeup and everything. The men, we wear tie and suit. 
we are using it to cover our reduced quality. Come on, shout like your voice is yours. Even the quality of our brains. Several years ago, when architects build buildings and engineers, it will be standing. Today's architects and engineers, I will not go far. Bribery and corruption has changed us. Several years ago, when somebody said, I'm a politician. I'm a politician. Or they would die for the people. Today, that one has changed. Several years ago, when somebody said, I'm a pastor. You know that there are some things you will never do them. But today, the pastor is a businessman, a politician. Um connection man so many t- oh come on give a big clap of it just, just, just preach the quality of the human being has reduced several years ago mosquitoes will bite us the whole night we won't get malaria our quality has reduced so today one lean mosquito pill and you see us the quality of the human being has reduced. Several years ago, when they say somebody's a doctor, doctor, before you wear that white something, it means you can handle things. These days, when you sit down, the doctor himself will ask you, what do you think is wrong with you? <laughs> then they'll tell you, oh, the body is your own. So you tell me what is wrong. If I knew it, I will come to you. <laughs> oh, come on, give a big clap of print. <laughs> Listen, people. What did I say? The quality of the human being is reducing. And because of that, Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. That is the only way we can attain unto Christ likeness. If we want our lives to be like Christ, the word of God must come into us. We must meditate on the word. The word must take hold of us. The word must take hold of our spirit, soul, and body. Come on, shout the word of God. Shout it again, the word of God. And finally, the word we must speak it because of environmental challenges. Environmental challenges. I tell you, our environment is becoming worse and worse and worse. This is the Hamatan. You can't handle it. Our trees are disappearing. When you go to America, hurricanes and hurricanes, tornadoes, Asia, in Africa, we've got our own equivalents. Strange weather. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere.